Hey, I'm Alexander Ludwig, and I'm here to talk to you about balls. Not golf balls, not footballs, not soccer balls, your balls. Look, I know it's not a comfortable subject to talk about, but we need to talk about it because cancer affects thousands of men and their families each year. Now, ORCID is the leading UK charity in male-specific cancers, so you can help them spread awareness by sharing this video and going to their website. Let's save some lives together. I think there is a, a lot of pressure on men to, to behave macho way. We have this kind of alpha male kind of um, thing about us where we just want to be the stronger person and don't want to show our weakness to each other. The problem with men, and they always get told off for this, um, they always have their own standard pants. And you know what's going wrong, but I think the problem with us is that we know there's something different, but we won't go and get it checked out. So. Um, there were no symptoms, apart from um, the very, very minute, kind of half a pea size, if that, um, lump on, on my testes. My right testicle was different to my left. It was like someone had tied a bit of string around my right one and just pulled it a bit tighter. So. There wasn't any lump as such on it, it was just felt different. I felt strong, I was a, at the time a full-time professional footballer, um, so I felt strong and fit um, and I had no other symptoms at all. I was still playing football, just going to the gym, just down about, just yeah, just felt fine, just had no other symptoms at all. It does open your eyes a little bit to, uh, to what potentially, um, if you don't check, um, the uh, potential dangers there are. The reason I didn't go to the GP was just through embarrassment and nervousness and I think subconsciously because I knew maybe there could be something wrong. I just kept putting it off because I didn't want somebody to tell me that there was something wrong. The initial reaction was to kind of put it aside and forget about it um, and I think that goes back to that kind of um, didn't really want to deal with it. So I um, thought it would go away. Um, again, that macho kind of feeling of, oh, it will go away, I'll be fine, you know, over a few couple, a couple of days. Uh, but it didn't go away. I would say it was probably about a year before I actually went to the doctor. Um, I just knew something was different, so having two testicles, one was different to the other. I knew that, didn't really know what it might be, I just knew it was different. I kept putting off going to the GP, thought it would go away uh, over time, um, it didn't, um, and uh, it, I just had to go to see them. Um, it kind of timed it in well that I was having to register with a new GP, uh, I just moved to a new location, so um, eventually with a persuasion from my girlfriend, um, I went to speak to the GP, and, and from there on I got put on to uh, a doctor at my football club. kept talking about it to the, the girlfriend at the time, now my wife, but she just got the empathy, keep talking about it, and just like, you have to go to the doctor now. And I went to the doctor under the guise of a knee injury, and that was the only way I would have got myself brave enough, which is stupid, to go down to the doctor. And then when I got in to see the GP and, and asked about my knee, and she said, all right, have a scan. She said, oh, is there anything else? I said, yeah, there is actually. And that's when she checked me out, which was, yeah, it was once I was there, it was fine. There was no embarrassment. It was, it was done, and, and then she sent me for, for an ultrasound ultrasound that afternoon. I went to the scan with my physiotherapist from Leighton Orient where I was working at the time, um, had the scan and it was confirmed there was a tumour of what kind we weren't sure yet. Um, I do remember leaving the building with my physio and I just turned to him and said am I going to live and his answer was I don't know. Straight away I knew there was a problem. The sonographer was looking a bit nervous and kept checking and kept checking and I come out of there and I remember phoning my wife saying you know, I think something's up here and they said I was going to fax the result straight through to the GP, so straight away I was nervous and I knew something was up. When I heard the news and it was confirmed, I think there was still a sense of disbelief and I think I didn't think it was happening to me um, and that kind of was the same process all the way through really. Um, it wasn't a case I wasn't accepting it, I just didn't think it was happening to me. I went back to work straight after the scan and um, carried on with my day, trying not to think about things, and uh, the doctor phoned up and said, uh, Mr Flint, I said, uh, yeah, can you uh, book an appointment? We've had your results for it. I said, all right, fine, yeah. I said, then when are you available? So I said, whenever, and they said, uh, could you come in tonight? 
and that's when I knew that there was something seriously up. Speaking to my father and, and explaining that I had a tumour, it almost felt like um, I'd kind of let him down, um, which I know that might sound a bit strange, but it felt like, um, I suppose it's that weakness um, that I'd kind of, um, something had happened and I couldn't deal with it uh, or I couldn't um, solve the problem. Having to tell my family, it just made it real. That's when I realised that there was, that they were just seeing that I was nervous in their eyes or they wouldn't say that they was nervous or worried. It, it just, again, made it all real. I feel that you look, at your, look up at your parents um, for, for strength and, and you look for them to, for guidance um, and, and that's where it should be. And when you hear your father or your mother cry over the phone, which, which was the case, um, it kind of um, unstables you a little bit. Um, uh, and, uh, yeah, that was, that was hard. Yeah, luckily, my family are really supportive, always been pretty open with things. Um, my mum, the previous year, she had breast cancer, so the, the C word, as it was known back then, was a very scary thought back then, but my mum had been through it, she'd had treatment, and, and it was a word that was open, openly used in, in her house. I had some very good people around me. Um, I was in a football environment, so um, straight away I had my manager of my football club, uh, my assistant manager of my football club, uh, and they had friends um, who'd experienced um, what I was going through and about to go through uh, within the football um, world, so to speak. Um, so straight away they put me through to, um, f to those people to speak to, um, to, to ask as many questions as I, as I possibly could. Played it down on the outside, but inside I think I was nervous, especially seeing what my mum went through because she had to have chemotherapy and, and I was worried that I might have to, to go down that road as well. I just then had my friends uh, and family who, who um, like I say, after the initial shock, um, really w were strong with me and I had a real kind of close knit of, of friends and family um, throughout the whole uh, process. And, and I've used the word positive, which um, was a real buzzword for me. And I just had that in my mind and stayed in my mind um, throughout uh, the, the whole journey. At the stage I went to uh, have the surgery, I still didn't know then that I had cancer. They just said, we wasn't sure it looks like it is but we just need to remove the, the testicle just to make sure. And uh, that, as a man, he's, it was sort of quite hard to take. We just didn't know how it would, would affect you at all. Going into the operation, I had uh, my physiotherapist with me uh, and my girlfriend. We went to uh, London again to have the operation, um, and I was in and out on the same day. I'd not been with my girlfriend long at that stage, and I didn't know what impact it was going to have on me, on her, or, or if we was going to start a family together in the future. And it actually at the time, because of the tests I had to have, I knew that I had a low sperm count and that I would have needed IVF to have children, um, which made me decide not to have chemotherapy. I had a one-dose um, treatment of um, chemotherapy called carboplatin, um, where I was on a trip for four to five hours in one day. Um, and that left me a bit queasy for, for 11 to 12 days, but I was very fortunate I didn't have to have a full cycle of chemotherapy as I'd caught the, uh, the tumour very early. It didn't affect my sex life at all. I actually remember waking up post-surgery and laying there and looking at a female nurse and then straight away I looked down at her wedding finger t and to see if she was married or not and I thought, i still got my mojo. <laughs> my sex life is, um, is all normal. Um, and um, I'm now married to my girlfriend who supported me through it and, um, and we're very happy together. After the surgery, um, we knew we were going to have to have IVF. We waited, I think, a year or so and then we knew we went down that process, had two lots of IVF and uh, the first one failed, the second one was successful. We had my little boy, Archie, and then a little while after that we had another lot and we had another little boy, Louis, so it all worked out well in the end. I think it's a cliche to say it kind of changed the perspective of, of life, but, but it did, and it has. Um, and I always use it when I get in a bad mood over something very small. Uh, I can pinch myself and, and I can soon change my mindset and just remember where I was. So the thing for me that I found out is if you think you've got a problem, any medical problem, just get down to the doctor and don't, don't take no for an answer. If you know that something's wrong, you know your own body, your own mind more than, than any doctor does. So just push for answers. If you are worried and concerned, then please speak to someone um, who you are comfortable to speak to. And there will be someone out there who, who wants to listen. There's loads of people out there that want to listen to, to any concerns that any young men have.